Now we go into turbulent transport and flux. Now, the gradient transfer theory, or K theory, eddy diffusivity theory, or mixing length theory, is analogous to molecular diffusion. It uses the, uh, it's parallel or it's similar to the molecular diffusion theory. This entire, th this uh, one, two, three, four theories. Now, this, these theories assumes that flux is linearly proportional and directly related to the local gradient following this main equation. Uh, this equation is not difficult to understand. It just simply states that um, you have bigger flux when the gradient is large. Does that make sense? Like say, if the temperature difference is large between one height and the other, then the, the rate at which the, the heat is removed will be faster. From heat is removed from the ground will be faster. That is for temperature. And if you can also extend this to uh, concentration, you can also extend this to moisture. Let's say if the surface is very wet, but the air above it is very dry, then evaporation will be a lot faster because the gradient is large. So that's what it means, basically. So this is a generic equation, but then it actually, not generic, here's generic, no, th this is for the heat flux as an example, but it doesn't just have to be for heat flux. Okay, we can calculate heat flux two ways, right? One is by using the eddy covariance method, which is the direct method to calculate flux. And the other way is to approximation. And that approximation uses this relation. For eddy covariance, you would need to have uh, the sensors, the fast response sensors, the sonic anemometers, the gas analyzers at 10 hertz. But if you don't have that, if you still want to calculate flux, you want to approximate it, you can approximate it by having two levels of measurements. One at the surface and one higher above, maybe by about 10 meters. So to, cal to calculate the flux, you just, you just calculate the difference between the surface and above, and also take note of the difference in height from below and above. <coughs> you get the gradient, and you multiply that over constant, and this value should approximate the flux. And if you calculate using the uh, eddy covariance method this way, you should be the same. So some research is working on uh, reconciling this direct um, emissions, di direct measurements using eddy covariance flux, and uh, with the gradient method. So you can imagine one is using direct measurements of eddy covariance, using direct measurements of flux, and the other one is using two, two multi-level uh, values, and then we get this value, we get this value, then we compare. Is it the same? How is it different? When did it deviate? Will it, what is the constant here? Negative means upward or downward movement, because sometimes it depends on convention. So negative is just to maintain the direction. So this K is the eddy diffusivity uh, term, and it is used instead of molecular diffusivity. So this particular theory, diffusion, is meant for uh, molecular diffusion. And you for already studied this in chemistry. Remember in physical chemistry, where you put a, what is that, that purple color chemical and a gel, you put it placed at the bottom of the gel, and then after some time you would diffuse through the molecules at a slow rate. Remember that one? So that is molecular diffusivity. Here we use the same concept, but instead of molecular diffusivity, it's eddy diffusivity. But the equation is the same. And we find that uh, we can use this uh, theory or we can use this way, this approach um, for eddies as well. So this K is the rate at which the eddies diffuse through. So you can imagine it to be something like that. And then we have all these eddies. You can think of them as molecules. And then above here, there's another molecule at the top. So this would diffuse through the molecules to move upwards if the gradient is positive. So the, way, how, the rate at which this one moves through these molecules uh, is the same style as how molecules move through uh, other molecules. So the parameter K is described to increase with the intensity of turbulence. That means uh, the, how fast the eddy goes through, uh, through another, uh, the air 
uh, is described by this K, uh, it's described by K, and this K is influenced by turbulence. The higher the turbulence, the, the, more, the faster that the eddies can diffuse through the air. And this K varies with height above ground, mean wind shear, and surface heating by the sun. So the rate at which this eddy goes here, goes upwards, depends if it's close to the ground or far further away from the ground. It depends on the wind shear, how much turbulence there are at the surface. It also depends on the surface, whether it's hot or cold. This goes back, it relates the, the concept between uh, the concept of the land cover, the surface condition, and the turbulence. And, and that also affects the, the rate at which the, the heat is removed from the surface or other parameters as well. This is another term, but similar to that just now. It's called this bulk aerodynamic formula. Same, same thing as just now. Uh, this bulk aerodynamic formula is used to estimate the fluxes of sensible, sensible and latent heat at the Earth's surface and the frictional drag on the surface winds as well. So we can do two ways. We can use two ways to calculate the flux again. We can use the eddy covariance way, the direct method, or we can use uh, this bulk method. So uh, that's why it's similar to one just now. So the effective sensible heat flux is often parameterized by the temperature difference between the surface and the air. If the surface skin temperature Ts is known, then the sensible heat flux, this is the unit of the sensible heat flux, Kelvin meter, second per, Kelvin meter per second from the ground to the air can be parameterized as this. Basically, same as just now, This is the surface, and this is another layer. The skin temperature is here, Ts. Then Ta is the air temperature, or TaiR, or Ta. And the flux is proportional, let's say this is flux H for heat, sensible heat, is proportional to Ts minus that make sense? If the gradient <coughs> is large, like this, high temperature, very low temperature here, what happens to the flux? Now, this is just proportionality. But for you to equate it, there's constants, right? FH equals to, let's say, a constant C, delta T, which is the same as this. The C here is the constant. Now the constant is just that CH. <coughs> now I talk about V. So CH is a constant. Now V is wind speed. So aside from just the difference in temperature or the gradient, there's also this factor uh, contributed. Uh, there's also the wind factor that contributes to the flux. So in the end, okay, we have the flux against the difference in temperature, but then there's also this U component as well, the wind speed. So in the end, it becomes this flux is equal to the delta T with a constant C and also U. And that's the bulk aerodynamic formula, and I guess you know where the aerodynamic term comes from. It comes from the U value, uh, the U parameter there. <clears throat> so let's read here, where CH is a dimensionless bulk transfer coefficient for heat, that is the constant, and V with a modulus there means it's absolute, um, it means it's mean wind speed. So this is another, that's why sometimes you get confused with the unit, with the symbol. Uh, you saw a few just now where we used uh, U bar, then V, right? And there's also this but they're the same. That means it's a scalar quantity. It's not a vector quantity. Okay? Just U for wind speed. There's no direction left, right, up, down. It's just wind speed, the, wind, the mean wind speed. The air are the wind speed and air temperature at standard surface measurement heights. Uh, there are standards. Uh, here are the standards of heights that you use to measure temperature. The most common is 10 meters and 2 meters. If you want to measure at the ground, 
Like remember this one TS is at the skin, then you put it at two meters. So to convert from kinematic to dynamic heat flux, uh, FH must be multiplied. Okay, kinematic means uh, from uh, the kinetic portion. This is the kinetic portion, the mean wind speed. If you want to convert it to the heat flux, because heat flux has a unit of watt per meter square, uh, sorry, yeah, watt per meter square, this FH must be multiplied by air density, multiply the specific heat at constant pres pressure, rho Cp. So this constant here, okay, let me write that again, we have FH equals to C and then U delta T. So you want to convert from this one to this. This one has a unit of what meter square? This one is a unit of ms negative 1. Then this one is k, right? So if this, this unit should be the same as this unit. So you want to change from this unit to this unit. That's why you have a c here. So this c here is, is different depending on what you want to uh, calculate. So if this is for sensible heat flux, this c here is rho cp. So rho is the density of air, Cp is the heat capacity of air. So from here, you can guess that the units would change this unit to this unit. But of course, for specific humidity, for other parameters, it would be different uh, constant. Same thing, so we can go through very quickly. A similar equation called bulk aerody aerodynamic relationships can be derived for the moisture flux from oceans, lakes, saturated soil. Uh, one can assume that the specific humidity near the surface QS is equal to the saturation value. So let's say if uh, you are measuring over the ocean like what I do, so the concentration of water at the surface can be considered at, uh, as saturation value. So that means the maximum amount of moisture there is in the air. So, uh, we, so we use this clausius clapeyron equation, but this is over water surfaces. Based on air temperature near the sea surface, Namely, the moisture flux uh, in kinetic, kinematic units, kilogram water per kilogram air, and so on, is this. So, going through this equation here, this is the humidity of air, hu humidity of air above the surface of the water, maybe about 10 meters above, or 4 meters, 5 meters above. And here is the calculated uh, moisture in the air, quite close to the surface. We, we can use clausius clapeyron equation to calculate this. I don't want to go into cross circle program, but it's quite easy. You just know the temperature. You plug in the value, then you get the value for the humidity. This is wind speed, and this is a constant. Calculate that, you get this. So, where CE is a dimensionless bulk transfer coefficient for moisture, and you notice that... Okay, there's one more thing that I forgot to mention. We have C here that changes the unit from here to here. But there is another constant attached to this. It's called, uh, uh, there's another one. Um, yeah, C H. So this is special for each parameter. So this for heat transfer is C H. For moisture, it's C E. But Let's say if you don't have that value, if you have one for CH, you can assume as the same as CE. So th this is an assumption people make. So it's, maybe it's not the best assumption, but then there's assumption uh, to make that can, can be used if you don't have enough data. So if you have CH, then you can assume it to be the same as CE, which implies that the transport of moisture or the transport of heat from a surface is the same the same rate. And that's the implication of uh, assuming this one. C E and CH is the same, approximately the same. It implies that the process of heat removed from the ocean or from the water, same as uh, moisture and heat, is the same. Same magnitude or same uh, trend. But that's a very common assumption to use. The C E equals to CH.